Hello and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, March the 3rd and spring has sprung and so have my spring allergies. So anyway, I hope y'all are having a great week. I do not know what is suddenly blooming here, but sorry for the little bit of a stuffy nose. We have spent an exorbitant amount of time outside this week and yeah, I'm all stuffed up because of it. But anyway, who cares? The sun was shining. The sun was shining. The tank is clean. The tank is clean. So yeah, so there we have it. Um, hello and happy Sunday, everybody. I'm Kelly. This is if you have an egg.com. This is chat and hello, Marlene. This is chat number 355 and it is titled how to stay inspired no matter what the scale says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some interesting um, fodder for our chat tonight. Hello, Elaine. It's good to see you. If you all, if anyone here is brand new, please let us know because we would love to say hi and welcome you. And I love to say hi and hello. Hello, Catherine from Lowell, North Carolina. If you're watching this later on YouTube, and that is just youtube.com, search if you have an egg. If you want to say hi there, fantastic. I would love to give you a shout out. If you don't, don't complain about us saying hello. And sorry, I missed a couple of people, so hello to, let's see, I missed Kim. Hello, Kim. It is good to see you. Hello. Greetings from Raleigh, Massachusetts. Sarah, it's so nice to see you. Hello, Mary Ann from Pennsylvania. Hello, Mary from Pittsburgh, and hello, Lynn. Nice to see you as well. So I hope y'all are having some fantastic weather. Ours is great. It was great here yesterday and today um, after a lot, a lot, a lot of rain. So yeah, somebody's been praying for rain because that's all that's all we've had um, since our big snowstorm about, what was that now? Six or eight weeks ago, I guess. And hello, Carol Lou. Hello, Anna. So yeah, we just keep getting wetter and wetter and wetter, and hello Orlando Debbie. So it was nice to see some sun today, nice to see some sunshine. It'll be nice to get some of those soggy areas um, out of Casey's yard because that's the area that we're living in and it is a soggy, soppy mess. But today was a lot of sunshine and hopefully tomorrow will be too. Again, I am Kelly, this is ifyouhaveanegg.com. This is chat number 355. Spring has sprung. So have the spring allergies. Hello, Barbara from Bonnell, South Carolina, and hello, Mary. Oh, Mary Ann's having beautiful weather in Pennsylvania. Um, but yeah, so sorry I sound a little, you know, a little bit stopped up today. And hello, Sandra from Demons Ferry, and hello, Katie. Happy Sunday to you. So this is chat number 355, how to stay inspired no matter what the scale says. So we're going to talk about the scale more here in just a few minutes. But today is March the 3rd. I've got a little bit of news. Oh, let's see. Kim says, warm here now, but expecting a lot of rain this week. Yeah. We can slow down on the rain. Of course, I know the summer when it is dry, hot, dry but humid. Does that make any sense here? And we'll be begging for rain then, but oh well, here we are today. So a little bit of news. Today is the first day of the Bulk It Up Challenge over on the If You Have an Egg um, Facebook group. If you are not already in the If You Have an Egg Facebook group, I am sure one of our lovely ladies will post the um, they'll post a link to it here in a little bit. You do have to answer three questions. Please answer them, even if you just put saw it on the chat, saw it on the chat, saw it on the chat. I have to know that you're a real person before I can let you in. Occasionally, um, non-real people in Hello Vicky actually still make it past me occasionally. It doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen anywhere near as much as it used to, but I don't know. It's people that I guess their accounts got hacked or something in Hello Hattie. So, okay. Um, the Bulk It Up Challenge, and that is one of my very favorite challenges for myself and everyone else. Hello, John. It's good to see you. So, you know, you all know I do hashtag Bulk It Up, and since we've moved from the loft to um, living in a fifth wheel right now, I do not have my little spinny thing to spin around, my hashtag Bulk It Up, but I love bulking it up. You all are going to love this challenge, and I challenge you to hop on over to If You Have an Egg. Thank you, Carol Lou, for posting that um, the link to the Facebook group. Uh, but I challenge you all to head on over to the If You Have an Egg group after the chat, join it, ask to join it, remember to answer the three questions, and then jump in that challenge. This is a challenge with yourself, okay? So Julie is hostessing this, and I did it correctly this week, hostessing, hostessing this um, because it's an encouragement to her, me, all of us, it's to just to kind of help us stay on track. Um, and bulking it up is a fantastic, fantastic way to do that. Yeah, Mary says she loves it to bulk it up. And hello, Sherry from Cape Coral, Florida. So bulking it up is simply adding a zero point something to, and thank you, Sarah, for that sweet comment. Bulking it up, hashtag bulk it up is just a way to add some zero point things to make something bigger and better. So maybe you're going to have, you know, like, I don't know, a taco salad and you're going to add some zero point salsa and some corn to it. Or like in my yogurt, I don't ever just eat yogurt. I always, always, always bulk it up with some zero point fruit. But anyway, that's the point of the hashtag bulk it up challenge is just to make it bigger, better with some zero point foods. So head on over there after the chat 
and go ahead and join that challenge. You don't have to do anything. There's nothing to pay. You just say, I'm in. Or you just respond or you just comment underneath where Julie has posted. So that started today. The, the hashtag Bulk It Up Challenge started today over on If You Have an Egg. Thank you again, Julie, for hostessing these. Okay, let's talk a little tiny bit about the app. Okay, nobody go off on a path on me because we are going to talk way more in depth about this in the second half. But there have been some ups. And there have been some downs in the past in the past few weeks and for two days last week i thought that the weekly topic under discover content was gone so gwen and now my fearless leader gwen announced in our tuesday meeting that the discover content tab you know the one that we always tell you all look under the three you know the three horizontal lines click on that and then go down and hello marlene from florida and we tell you to click on that and then we tell you to scroll down to discover content so that you can see what the weekly topic is for this week and for prior weeks because you can't go back to prior weeks on the computer so we always tell you to do that it was gone for a couple of days i mean it was just like flat gone i mean i looked and looked and looked and looked you know because i'm up for a good challenge so i looked and looked and hunted i never found it but all of a sudden it was back so all of a sudden that one is back um not sure what happened but it just suddenly came it came back as suddenly as it was gone and I had to update my iPad to make it show on the iPad. So my phone updated itself. Hello, Jocelyn. My phone updated itself. And hello, Sandra from Naperville. My, um, and Jocelyn is from California. Um, my phone updated itself. I had to force update my iPad. But because I did that, I got this message when I did the update. It said, we have debugged and improved our app experience, worked on issues that caused crashes, and fine-tuned a handful of things behind the scenes all to empower your WW journey and help you build habits for a happy, healthy life. Okay, so that's what the updates were about. More about this and what longtime member, also Julie, longtime uh, member in Egglet Julie, discovered. We're going to talk about all of that in the second half, okay? So just hang tight with me for that. Okay, that said, there are quite a few of us here. So give me a thumbs up if you attended an in-person workshop last week. Thumbs ups for that. Or if you went to a virtual workshop, which I'm sure Sarah did, but thumbs ups for that. Thumb, thumbs ups for in-person workshops or for virtual workshops. And I'm giving myself a thumbs up. And there's a super thumbs up from somebody. Awesome, awesome. And hearts, if you were here with us live last week or if you watch later on demand. So let's see some hearts for that. Yep, and there's Anne. And Anne, I know that you had your bottom in a chair because I saw you. I saw you. And I have your sample popcorn here to talk about in the second half too. And Lynn was is all thumbs ups and hearts. Uh, Larry two she went to see larry twice this morning mary's hearts melissa i know that you were there because i saw you and marlena's thumbs up so good job everybody bravo stickers to everyone who attended an in-person workshop oh sarah how cute sarah's doing cute little heart exclamation points bravo 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 so bravo stickers to everyone who attended in-person workshops this week or um, virtual workshops and also was here with us live last week so extra bravo stickers for that okay last week it was chat number 354 and we were talking about how to hack your home to stay on track absolutely one of my favorite topics didn't know it was going to be a favorite topic until gwen introduced us to this concept i don't know five six seven eight nine ten years ago or something um and it was oh and thank you sarah that's very sweet so um we i know everyone all of us and we did it this week here in the showroom got into a container and went what did that used to be? Now, it was not my container, not mine. It was from one of the other girls. But we pulled it out, and we were like, that's been in there a really long time. What is in that container? It was unidentifiable. So it wasn't a very expensive container, so the whole thing got chucked, okay? The whole thing got thrown out. That's not the way to organize your refrigerator or your loft or to hack your home, okay? So we've all been there. We've all done that. So some things that I, some things that I said and Weight Watcher said and my fearless leader Gwen said, some things that are, um, you know, easy ways to hack your home, things that are easy, like setting out your gym clothes or making sure that you've got a snack or some, you know, some water in your bag, something like that, having your favorite appliance ready. Like I always have an air fryer near me and ready to go. Things like that. That's the easiest way to make sure that they get used. Uh, my fearless leader Gwen puts every night before she goes to bed, she puts her tennis shoes out, then she puts her warm-up pants on top of that, and her shirt on top of that, and her sports bra on top of that. So she goes, bra, shirt, pants, shoes, boom, and she's out the door. That's the easiest way to make sure that things get used is to have them ready to go. 
Okay, remember the principle of least effort that we talked about last week? So an actual PhD, so somebody with a doctorate, um, said that there are two factors that drive, that guide and kind of drive human behavior. The first one is a desire to maximize benefit. So if you didn't think that you were going to get a big benefit out of something, like if I said, okay, we're going to spend all day today walking around the parking lot and picking up pennies, you would probably be like, I don't know, Kelly, you know, that's not really a maximum benefit. I mean, what are we gonna, what are we gonna find, 20 cents? I mean, that's really not maximizing the benefit. But if instead I said, okay, we're gonna walk around the parking lot today and we're gonna pick up $100 bills, you'd be like, yeah, now we're talking. That's maximizing that benefit. So a desire to maximize the benefit and a desire to minimize effort. So in that same ridiculous example, if I said, you're gonna pick up pennies with your toes, you'd be like, I'm out. I am out. I'm gonna find maybe 20 cents and how in the world am I gonna pick them up with my toes? But if I said, we're gonna go around the parking lot and pick up $100 bills and I gave you a personal, um, a personal uh, like uh, assistant who was going to pick them up for you and hand them to you, maximize benefit, maximum benefit, least amount of effort, minimize the effort. That is the principle of least effort. That is what we're talking about when you're talking about hacking your homes. Is it's got to be? It's got to give you the maximum benefit, but with the least amount of effort. And then we talked about now you see me. So remember those. And I think the girls actually put them up. Where we talked about the clear containers versus the dark, the opaque or the dark containers, or putting things low because we're less likely to go down. It like okay. So there's. I'm just here looking here, so I've not looked in this cabinet in forever. There is a bag of tortilla chips, and. Huh, some assorted sauces that I did not know were down there. So Gwen and Weight Watchers and whoever um, created this thought, they're exactly right. We're much more likely to go up and get something than we are to go down and get something. So keeping it out of sight, keeping it in an opaque container. Um, when we opened, one of the girls opened the container with the mini marshmallows in it and she was like, why? Why are we hiding mini marshmallows? And I said, yeah, so I won't eat them. That's exactly why we're hiding them. And and then we talked about the now you see me principle that if you can see it, if it's something that you want to be able to see, and Sarah says it's hard to bend with arthritis too. I'm sure it's much easier to, to, stand, to reach up and get something. But the now you see, now you see me um, theory of putting things that you can see, some things that you wanna have in clear containers and having them up front, ready to go, and having things that you don't want to be able to consume, like those more, or you like, want to avoid, you know, don't want it to be right there in your face like those marshmallows, putting them in something um, opaque or something that you can't, you know, can't really see through. So your homework for last week was now you see me, hashtag now you see me. It was still really very easy homework, okay? Kind of surprised that not more of you, the more of you didn't do it, but hold on a second. Debbie says she bought a rotating rectangle Lazy Susan for the fridge, so now she can see the stuff in the back easier to share. You've got to share, where did you get that? A rectangle, Lazy Susan? That is fantastic. And I actually saw a thing today on Amazon, um, not that I need to see paper plates where I can use them, but a new thing that suctions on the bottom of your, um, it's new to me anyway, it suctions on the bottom of a shelf to put like paper plates and things in. And I thought, wow, that would be really good to put like snacks that I want to be, that I want to go to those snacks first, non-perishable snacks, or maybe clementines or something that I want to keep them where I could see it. It might work for the refrigerator too to suction that on there and then just be able to pull that out too. So yeah, you're gonna have to send, you're gonna have to share the link on the rectangle lazy Susan Debbie because I definitely want to see that. Um, but not a lot of, well, quite a few of you did your homework. This one was so easy. It was so easy that I'm shocked more of you didn't do it. But let's see, Sarah was paying attention during the chat last week and she made a goal to get her grapes in a clear container front and center so that she could find them. Sarah, did it happen? Did that actually happen? Did you put those, did you get your grapes and put them in a clear container where you could see them? Casey, my daughter, put the easy snacks for the girls. So the things that are easy, that are, you know, they're just easy things, like things like goldfish crackers, things like peanut butter crackers, things like that. She put them, um, she put the easy snacks for the girls a little higher than where their eyeballs are. So she put those up. That's okay, Sarah, you thought about doing it. So that counts. But she put those, the easy snacks, um, the ones that we don't necessarily want them to choose, but you know, kids have to have goldfish crackers to, to survive. She put those above their eyeballs, you know, because their eyeballs are like this tall. 
So she put them up here so that she couldn't see them, and she put them in an opaque um, pull-out tray so that they're there. They're still there, and they can, and they're more than welcome to have them when they get hungry, but they don't just walk by and open a bag of mini muffins or open a bag of crackers or open a bag of whatever and just leave them everywhere. But she put the bowl of apples and bananas down where they could see them, and guess what they've been choosing more often? You're right, apples and bananas. Then Marlene put a bowl of apples on her dining room table, but not just apples. She also set out a jar, a clear see-through mason jar of Truvia brown sugar, and she set out her apple core nearby to remind herself how, how what a quick and healthy and easy snack that she could make with the that she could make with that. So easy peasy, good job everybody. So extra Bravo stickers for those of you who did um, who actually who did your homework um, this week. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Good job everybody. Okay, this week we're talking about how to stay inspired no matter what the scale says. And I'm gonna tell you three things. The three things are nine, that's one, is nine, nine, for those of you who don't speak Southern. The second thing is zero. And the last thing is all of them. Okay, those are the three things I wanted to tell you. Nine, the number nine, the number zero, and all of them. Okay, so what does that mean? Nine equals the number of times I found previous chats that talked about our obsession with the scale. I wasn't even really trying very hard. I just went to if you to our website, if you have an egg.com, and I typed in scale, S-C-A-L-E, S-C-A-L-E. Apparently, we were obsessed with the scale because I found nine times that the word scale was mentioned, and I only went to the second page. I'll uh, have Casey put the link to that, to where I found that with this word scale um, on the blog notes for you all. If you want to go to if you have an egg.com, check out this chat after tonight. Um, ooh, and Debbie posted the Lazy Susan. Awesome. Um, if you want to go check that out after tonight, you can go to www.ifyouhaveanegg.com, and you can see... I'll sh we'll share that link so that you can go straight to the nine times that we that the word um, scale was used without even trying really hard. I think I only made it to the second page, okay? This is the second page. So nine is the number of times that I found scale just in the first two pages of, our, of just searching that on our um, website. The next thing I wanted to tell you is zero. Zero equals the number of times that the scale gets to decide how you did today or what your value is as a human, okay? The scale is an inanimate object. It doesn't have feelings. It doesn't have emotions. It doesn't get to decide how you did today. So if you stayed on track all day, get on the scale and you don't like the number, the scale doesn't get to decide how you did today. If you've been doing great all week, get on the scale. It says, mm, sorry, you've got to gain. It doesn't get to decide, so zero. Zero equals the number of times the scale gets to decide how you did today or what your value is as a human. And then all of them, the third thing was all of them. All of them is the number of times you should celebrate those little things that the scale doesn't tell you, okay? Things like, and yes, it is a metal monster, Sarah. So things like revisiting your why. We all joined for the first time or the fifth time, or in my case, the sixth time for a reason. So we all had a reason when we joined. Your reason might have been to lose weight, it might have been for a class reunion, it might have been for your grandchildren because your doctor said you were going on medicine, whatever your why was. Um, if you haven't thought about your why, what your reason was for joining for a while, or if it's changed, like mine has changed a couple of times over time, go back and revisit it. Heck, even write it down and post it where you, where you can see it, you know, whatever your why is, what your reason is for doing what you're doing. You need to put it somewhere. You need to have it somewhere where you can see it. Next, I want you to name three things. So even if the scale hasn't bud budged this month, I bet you can name three things that have changed since you've started this journey. So it might be something like you can bend over and tie your own shoes. Okay? Maybe you aren't. Yeah, all of the above, LOL, says Mary. Um, maybe you're not embarrassed when somebody comes to your house and opens your refrigerator or looks in your trash can. So if somebody opened, like I just opened our trash can, and I see um, a wrapper for Twinning's Detox Tea, which is what I made to drink tonight during the chat, I see receipts, I see, oh, I see part of a, um, I see the remnants of a bag salad. So maybe that's something, maybe that's one of the, maybe that's something that you can be proud of is because, hey, 
when people come and look at our trash can, they don't go, um, yeah, cookie wrappers or empty Girl Scout cookie boxes or whatever. I don't have to be embarrassed for, you know, somebody opening the refrigerator or opening our trash and looking at it. Or in my case, it could be that you don't have to keep Pepto-Bismol, Rolaids, Tums, something like that in stock, on hand, or even think about it. So I used to have to keep Pepto-Bismol at the ready. Like I had it in my refrigerator and I had a backup bottle of it um, in our bathroom. I don't do that anymore. I haven't even thought about Pepto-Bismol until we started talking about this on Tuesday night. So might be something like that. <coughs> okay. So are you thinking about three things? Are you thinking about three things that you could go, you know what? I don't have to eat Tums anymore. Or, you know, I wasn't out of breath when I, I wasn't winded when I've been over to shave my legs this morning. Or I could been I could shave my own legs this morning. Or, you know, my knees don't hurt as bad when I walk. Or I squatted, I got down to the floor and I could get myself back up again. But listen, weren't we talking about that? Weren't we talking about that's supposed to be a, tr a true sign of how you're aging is, is how fast it takes you or how long it takes you to get back up after the floor? I feel like we talked about that at um, Weight Watchers a couple of weeks ago. So now though, you're headed on to your victory lap. By now you're all thinking, oh yeah, NSVs. I remember those, so we've, we've talked about them over the years, but we haven't talked about them much lately, have we? Now is the time, NSV, so I'm saying the letter N-S-V, and for those who are doing sign language, N, hello Evie, N-S-V. So NSVs, oh yeah, Melissa says yes, just to be able to get up on your own. That is a fantastic victory. Okay, so NSVs or non-scale victories are all those little things and sometimes they're big things. Sometimes they're really big things that tell you how you're really doing, how your week went, and sometimes, sometimes, just sometimes, what a really great person you are, okay? So the NSVs can tell you that. Okay, I'm going to read through with you because I'm actually a minute or two ahead and you all are doing your homework, which is fantastic. So, let's see. Yep, Sarah says, even though I've regained 20 since September, I'm so happy um, how, far I've still, how far I've come and learned a lot on the program, that is perfect. Um, Terry says the seller stairs are easier. Debbie, Debbie spelled it out. NSV, non-scale victories for us. You know, absolutely fantastic. Uh, yep. Okay, those are awesome. So keep doing, keep doing your homework because that's going to be your homework is hashtag victory lap. Your homework this week is hashtag victory lap. Where are my cheerleaders? Hello, Loretta. So I need to see. Some of you all are fantastic, fantastic cheerleaders. So I need to know where are my cheerleaders? because I want to hear some whooping and hollering this week while everyone is celebrating, while we're celebrating all of your victories, okay? I want so many people posting what their NSVs are. A, I want so many people to post what their NSV is so that we can celebrate it and we can hoop and we can holler. Also, I want it to confuse the people who don't talk very much on, um, and thank you, Lynn, for posting hashtag victory lap, but I want to confuse the people who don't talk very much on if you have an egg and make them think, why, what is going on? What have I missed? Why am I getting all these notifications with, with hashtag victory lap, hashtag V-I-C-T-O-R-Y-L-A-P, hashtag victory lap. Um, yeah, we want to celebrate them. We want to celebrate them all, large and small and it doesn't have to be something huge you know and remember this has nothing to do with the scale so these are not these are not oh i lost five pounds or i've lost 20 pounds or i'm at goal or whatever this has nothing to do with the scale we are celebrating things that are non-scale victories so it might be something big like not having to ask for the extra extension you know on an airplane um Sherry says they are very important. They are extremely important. It's extremely important that you recognize them when you have them. And it could be tiny. I mean, it could be the tiniest little thing. Like, it's a big deal for me to not have to keep Pepto-Bismol. That is a tiny, tiny thing. But do you know how awesome that is? Oh, and Debbie says she can do her own pedicures and doesn't have to go somewhere unless it's just for pleasure because she can reach her feet. Fantastic. Those are fantastic. So, I want all of my cheerleaders cheering you all on. Um, and especially if you do your homework here, you can do it here on um, the If You Have an Egg page and I will automatically see it or you can still do it here in the chat and we will cheer you on or you can go over to the If You Have an Egg Facebook group and we would love to cheer you on over there. But I want so many people to do their homework that we absolutely confuse the heck out of the people who don't talk very much and make them wonder, why am I getting all these notifications? 
because you know what? That is a little NSV in itself too that they have joined and are part of a group of like-minded people, of like-minded people, you know, who want to share what their what their victories are, small and large. And Vicky says, hashtag non-scale victory, I am important. Yes, ma'am, you are. Yes, you are. And see, and sometimes we don't realize that until we start a journey like this. And oh, Loretta says, NSV, I went down a size and don't feel bloated like I used to. Is not feeling bloated not fantastic? I mean, that seems like such a weird thing, but I totally get what you're saying, that you don't walk around going, oh gosh, you know, I just feel bloated all the time. That one is an awesome one. Okay. Do your homework, do your homework, do your homework. I want to wear out everybody's notifications with thinking, what are they doing? Because maybe they will join in also. Okay, so because I'm scared that I'm gonna start coughing, I'm gonna go ahead and skip on to the second part. If you are new with this, this is a one hour chat. Um, and this is chat number 355. And we are talking about how to be inspired, how to stay inspired, even when the scale is being, you know, a goober, a jerk, you know, whatever. Um, so it's time now for the, at the halfway point. Yes, Sandra, it is. We're all going to drink some water. This is the only time of the week that I know that everybody drinks some water. I, however, am drinking some tea. I am drinking Twinnings Detox Tea. Um, no, that has nothing to do with allergies, but just trying to get some of this, you know, just out of my head. So, so everyone get you a sip of some water or some tea or something relaxing this is a this is a um, caffeine free so that when I leave you all I can go straight home and go to bed okay so it is time for part two part two we are going to revisit the crazy app the crazy Weight Watchers app let me go ahead and put on my apron we are not cooking anything tonight but I am going to show you a, some follow-up things from last week when we talked about when we talked about popcorn in the second half. So if you are again, if you're new or if you're watching this on um, YouTube, that's just YouTube.com. Search if you have an egg. The second half always has the apron. So if you think mm, I missed something, actually, I had a lady walk up to me Tuesday. This is such a funny story. And if she's here, you'll just have to say, "Oh well, sorry, Kelly." I had a lady walk up to me at our in-person workshop. And I just realized I put this on over my jacket. Oh, well. Um, but I had a lady walk up to me at our in-person workshop Tuesday, and she said, hey, do you have that, are you the one that has that egg thing? And I said, yes, yes, I am the one that has that egg thing. And she said, well, I didn't get to finish watching. I fell asleep. And I thought, well, I'm glad my voice is so soothing that you fell asleep. I mean, seriously. But it was no problem because I told her, oh, hey, if you just want to see the second half, you do not have to sit through the entire first half to get to the second half. Just look for when the apron goes on. Also, Casey posts them as two completely separate videos. So if you go to YouTube and watch the first, like all of it, the whole hour is posted as the first video. And then the second half is posted with just the apron. So you'll know when we get to the fun part. Okay, first things first. Last week, we're going to talk about the app here in a second. But last week, we did a pop, I did a popcorn challenge. And we tested the Black Jewel popcorn. Mm and Jolly Time Select for Yellow Popcorn Lovers and Orville Redenbacher White Popcorn. And you all chimed in with how you felt about popcorn, you know, what your favorites were, whether you thought they were gonna pop big or small or be, you know, taste different, be more points, be less points, you know, whatever. And I have to say, if it's just popcorn, okay, this was the number one comment that I got last week. The number one comment I got last week was, yeah, but yellow popcorn is more points than white popcorn. No, it's not. No, it is not. It just isn't. If you air pop the popcorn and don't use any oil, don't use any real butter, you don't add anything that has points, then it's still zero points. It doesn't matter if it's yellow, white, black, whatever. But um, Anne, who was in our in-person workshop and who was here tonight, she was kind enough to bring some examples from a store that's about, what would you say, Anne, about an hour from here in a little town called Bulls Gap, and it's called Yoder's, Y-O-D-E-R-S, and it is Yoder's Amish. It's just an Amish country store. So if you have an Amish store near you, or you might even be able to order Yoder's online, should have checked that out before I started. But Ann was kind enough to bring these and share them with us after we had our little popcorn discussion to us at our in-person workshop. And I just wanted to show these to you, you know, really quickly. I did not know that there is a blue popcorn. 
I don't know if you can see, I know this isn't a blue bag, but if you can see the kernels, so this is called blue, and the blue does pop a little smaller. This pops a little bit smaller than some of them. Oh yeah, and that's right, Ann says you can also, so if, if you're in East Tennessee, she said you can also get this Amish popcorn. You can get it at JV's Market in Clinton. And I forget, Ann, don't you, you know them or you're related to them or something? So yeah, so if you're in Clinton, Knoxville, La Follette, Jacksboro, you know, anywhere in this East East Tennessee area, you can go to JB's Market and also get these. So there is a blue version. It was yummy. There's a baby yellow. Look how tiny those are. So that's a baby yellow. They were still better than the black. Yeah, baby yellow. She brought us one that was rainbow. And I think that is just, oh yeah, he, okay, so sorry. So JB graduated with her little brother. So yeah, so support JB's Market. Um, rainbow, and I have a feeling this one with the mix that's in here, I don't know if this was rainbow popcorn, like if it was rainbow on the cob, or if they just mixed, you know, a bunch of different, a bunch of different colored kernels together, you know, in that. Then she also had baby white. So it was a smaller, a little bit smaller white. This is even, that's about the same size as the white. Um, oh, and Debbie says Yoder's is on Amazon too. Seriously? Yoder's is on Amazon? Didn't know that. Because Bull's Gap is like this big. And I just assumed that Yoder's was just ours and that no one else had it. Mm, okay, that's kind of disappointing. Just kidding. Okay, and then this one, everybody got super excited. It's caramel type. Caramel type. So I don't know if this is the kind that is most popular for making caramel popcorn from, but this tastes like normal popcorn. She also brought a couple of se different seasonings for us to try, but this one is a, ca a caramel type, and these were nice and fluffy. I ended up eating about a half a bag of this one. Thanks, Anne. But this one was my favorite, and Anne, I want to know which I want to know which of these Yoder's popcorns because you bought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't think I got one of all of them. So you bought what, eight? You bought a sampler pack and you had like eight different kinds. This one was my favorite, the mushroom holus. It has nothing to do with mushrooms. It doesn't taste like mushrooms. They're just ginormous. These are huge. That was my favorite. So the mushroom holus was my favorite of the ones that Ann brought from, um, from Yoders. So thank you, Ann. That was very sweet of you. But yeah, mushroom holus was definitely my favorite. So if I wander up to Yoders, in, um, yeah, she says she thinks that one's her favorite too. If I wander up to Yoder's in um, Bulls Gap, I will be sure and check that out. Okay, <clears throat> so here in the second half, I want to tell everybody, I want to wish you all congratulations. Your app is bug free. So according to the statement that Weight Watchers put out when they updated the app, and it says, hold on, let me find it. Remember, when they updated this, this last update, I had to force my iPad to do it. My phone automatically did it, but I had to force my iPad to do it. But I'm glad I did because I got this note. We've debugged and improved our app experience, worked on issues that caused crashes, and fine-tuned a handful of things behind the scenes. Remember last week when I was talking about, okay, there's some software developer that has messed this up, and I hope it was an accident, and I hope they mean to put it back. Okay. So fine-tuned a hand up full of things behind the scenes, all to empower your WW journey and help you build habits for a happy, healthy life. Okay, so congratulations, your app is debugged. Um, it, it does seem to be working a little bit better this week. I've not had any issues. I haven't heard anybody say, it, usually at least once a week here lately, I get a message that says, is your app down? Is your app down? My app is down. I'm assuming those are the crashes that they're talking about. Um, we have all been frustrated with some of the updates that they've made, things that they've taken away, things that appear to be gone, things we can't find, whatever. So the um, Discover Content tab, and I'm going to show you on my iPad here in a second, but the Discover Content tab was down, that was gone, not, the Discover Content tab wasn't gone. The weekly topic was gone for just a couple of days. So I don't know if that was an oversight and then they just turned it back on or if they thought about taking it away and people freaked out and they put it back on. Not really sure how that went down because I'm not in their inner circle, but um, it's back. And a couple of other things are back. And Julie, that is perfect timing. So what we are literally getting ready to talk about 
are a few things that Julie figured out, and Julie, don't blow the secret for everybody, but a few things that Julie figured out just today, I think it was, or might have been late yesterday. So everybody say hello to Julie. Julie is also the one that um, that is hostessing the Bulk It Up Challenge. So if you have any questions about how you can bulk something up or how the challenge works, because again, there's nothing to sign up for, there's nothing to pay, there's nothing to do, you just do it, you just do it. You just challenge yourself. Um, but yeah, everybody say hello to Julie. She's the one that's hostessing that. And Julie and Orlando Debbie had a great debate, not debate, had a great discussion back and forth. It was either yesterday or today about um, some of these things that are back. So I just, I have an iPad. So I have, I have Apple products. Yeah, and Julie found one of the things that I'm gonna show you. She found where it was. So we've all been searching for this. And again, I'll show you here in just a second. But, um, but I have an iPad, I have Apple products. So it might be just a little bit different if you have an Android, Julie, Debbie, jump in if I'm missing anything. But the first thing that we thought was missing, and I've never seen, <coughs> I've never seen my leader Gwen actually mad. Like I've seen her irritated a couple of times, but I've never, and if you've ever met her, she's just, she's just, so, it's okay, Julie. Shh, shh, shh. Julie said she found it by accident. Shh, 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 shh. Nobody needs to know it was an accident. Okay. I, if y'all know Gwen, if you've known her very long, like, my, like Gwen was my mom's leader, okay? Doesn't mean that Gwen's that old. Just means she's been doing this for a really, really, really long time. I've seen her irritated a handful of times, but I've never actually seen her mad. She was approaching um, irritability when she thought that the weekly topic was gone. So hold on a second. It is back. And again, I had to force mine to update. And yes, I know that this is gonna be backwards. Um, sorry, because we're doing this on Facebook. But so here is your app, and I'm gonna do a couple of short little video clips for Casey to um, poke into this video when she posts it on YouTube. But so here is your app, and Discover Content is the three little lines up here at the top. So for a couple of days last week, when you, when you clicked on the three little lines, that's called the hamburger menu, some people call it the three horizontal lines, but down here, when you scroll down to discover content, for a couple of days last week, this was not there. The weekly topic was just gone. And it went straight to Brooke Shields' lovely face for the walk talks. But I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What do you mean? What do you mean we can't even see this week's weekly topic? So if you are using a desktop, you can only see one week at a time. And if you want to be able to go back to it, you're gonna have to save that as a link to yourself. You're gonna have to save it, you're gonna have to bookmark it. Um, seems like a lot of trouble to go back and forth, but you are not gonna, on a, on a desktop computer, you are not gonna find it any other way. And I thought, oh my gosh, if they have done this to the app, I'm gonna I'm a hurt somebody. I'm going to hurt somebody. So again, I don't know, I don't know if it was intentional. I don't know if it was like, oh, we did some programming and oh no, where did the where did the weekly topic go? Maybe it was an accident, I don't know, but it is back. And when you're on the weekly topic, you can click here for see more information and it will take you to more information about that weekly topic and about you know some other things or, hold on, oops, I didn't mean to get off that. Sorry, working upside down. Discover content, weekly technique. See more techniques. Okay, and here it is. Oh, and it's even changed. Okay, it's even changed since I clicked on this er um, earlier. Hmm. Oh, and Debbie said, AI hey, did not find that programming error, er error lol. We talked about AI on Sunday school today. That's a whole other topic. Yeah, I've seen the movies. This doesn't end well. Okay, but you can go back and so like you could go if you wanted to go to the one about um, how to get excited about your go-to food again. You can just touch that and you can go back and forth. Okay, here though was something that I was very upset about. Julie was very upset at, about it. Debbie was pretty perturbed about it. But Julie found it today. Accidentally, yeah, Julie, we're not getting started on AI. Um, but Julie accidentally found this today, and we are getting ready to talk about it. Um, 
There's one other thing I wanted to show you real quick though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, challenges. If you go, before we go into what Julie found, I did notice this. If you go to the hamburger menu or the three horizontal lines, and if you go to challenges, there are some new challenges on there. So there are challenges on there that have not been on there before, and it is displaying all of your previously completed challenges up at the top. So right now, the available challenges are food, seven days strong, it starts on Monday, Food Top Tracker starts on Monday. Food Weekend Warrior starts on Saturday. Food Injury Day Strong, Activity Get Moving, and Activity Get Moving All-Star. So Food um, Injury Day Strong, that was a new one. So this challenge is tracking food consistently is more important than tracking every last bite, which is good news for some of us who don't track every single thing. Track your dinner every night this week to build a solid routine and complete the challenge. So all you have to do is just com is just track one meal each night for seven nights and you will earn this badge. And then the other one that was new is uh, um, Get Moving All Star. That one is a new to me badge. When combined with healthy eating habits, adding activity to your routine leads to greater weight loss. Track 20 minutes of activity every day this week to complete the challenge and you will earn that lovely badge. Okay, now back to what Julie found. So again, that was a, this was a subject of contention with me, and um, Julie was pretty perturbed about it, so was Debbie. A lot of you all were, but it appears that it is back, and I'm telling you, I wore the app out on my phone, not on my iPad, I wore the app out trying to find where you save a meal or where, where you create meals, and Julie discovered that today, that it's either back or I'm blind or something. So if you just go to what your chosen meal is, so I'm gonna click on breakfast, and then see this plus sign in the upper left-hand corner? Before I updated this, if you touch that plus sign, all it did was give you an opportunity to, um, yeah, and Sarah says, yes, how to save a meal. So until I did the force update on my iPad, touching this plus sign, all it did was let you um, like enter a new food, like enter like quick, like quick track. That's all it lets you do. But now, if you touch the plus sign successfully upside down, do you see this new little menu? So now, and I'm so sorry, it's upside, it's backwards. I mean, now there is a new menu that says tools. So that plus sign opens up a tools menu, and the tools are quick add, create recipe, create food, and create a meal. Okay, so I'm going to show you quick add. Oops, I accidentally touched off of that. Hold on. Open the tools menu. Don't try to do this upside down. If you touch quick add, it's going to take you down here to quick add where you can just, you can top in, you know, like if it's something that you already know, like, you know, like something that you eat every day or you already know what the points are or whatever. Um, or sometimes I do this if I don't know the points. I'll just do a quick add and I'll just be like, you know, birthday party 60 points or, um, you know, whatever. And you can do a quick add and add it there. If you need to use a calculator, you can touch calculator at the bottom of that screen and you can punch all of that data in and, you know, go ahead and you can go ahead and enter all that. If it's something that you need to figure out what it is, you can top in the nutritional information, um, you know, and find that. Let's see, and Debbie says, yeah, a couple of weeks ago we lost our old meals that were saved too, but got those back, you know, when you do this. Okay, so touch that again, touch that plus sign again, and you have to go to a meal to do this. So you either have to go to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snacks. This plus sign with that drop-down menu, right, as of right now, as of today, as of March the 3rd, 2024, it doesn't exist anywhere else but here. So you go into breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snacks, and then you get this plus sign, and you know it could change tomorrow. You get that, do the plus sign again. You can also go to create recipe. That is the normal, the normal format for creating a recipe. You name it, tell it how many people it serves, and do, you know, put all of that in. So that's, that's normal, but that's a new spot for that. So you can, you can do that and create a recipe, or you can do the plus sign. 
if you can do it upside down, and do um, create a food. And that's another place where you can enter, where you can enter all of the information. But do you see what is back? So I'm gonna, I know it's backwards, but I am going to let you all look at that for a second. Do you, yeah, Julie says, it'll change because we found it. Mm -hmm, I know. But do you all see what is back? And I was complaining about this maybe three, four weeks ago. And if anybody sees it, you get an extra gold star or something. So this is where you would create a food and you can type in the name of the food. You can type in its nutritional information. Come on, nobody sees what's been missing for about three or four weeks. Nobody? What is it? What do you see that's also been missing? There's something in this screen in particular that has also been missing and I was really complaining about it because sometimes I'm a little lazy. Remember, not lazy. I'm just taking the path of least resistance or path of least whatever that guy said, whatever the PhD said it was. Okay, the scan nutrition. Yep, exactly. Julie's exactly right. The scan nutrition facts is back. So if it's something that you're going to have to top in, you can, you can scan. So here's the nutrition facts. Oops, sorry. You got to tell it you're ready. I think I'm gonna have to set it down. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, so it scanned, it scanned this, and it put in one serving. So let's pretend that this is something that's not already on the app. If I needed to scan the food, I, now I took a picture of it, and I didn't touch anything, and now it said it's one serving, 230 calories, one gram of fat, zero, blah, blah, blah. So it went ahead and put all that in here. Now, this is already in there. I mean, this is already in there, but if it's something that you can't find it, or you think mm, something's missing, you know, or whatever, that scan feature is back. So that has been missing for weeks, maybe even longer. You know, but sometimes I don't want to sit and top in. If I want to add a food, I don't want to sit and top in the name. I'm not going to top the name in, but the name, the servings, the calories, the blah, 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 blah. So that scan feature is back, and it already calculated the points up here. So if this was a food, and again, that Annie Chun's um, spicy miso ramen, which was delicious, by the way, it is, it, it is already in there, but let's pretend like it wasn't. Then um, you, could, you could go through, yeah, or Debbie says, or if the nutritional information is not correct for the points or whatever, you can go through, you can scan it and let it pull that up, you know, itself, rather than have to top it in. So let me show you again the difference between those two and then we'll go to the um, create a meal so that we don't run out of time on that. So if you go to the plus sign, hello, and if you go to quick add, and then do show calculator, quick add and show calculator, that's where you're gonna have to hand type everything in, okay? Show add, sh I'm sorry, quick add, show calculator, that's where you have to type everything in. But if instead, if you go to create food, and then scan nutrition label, it's going to let you scan it, it'll let you scan that, and here we'll just do another one real quick, or do I have anything, I don't think I've got anything here that's not, it's not already on the app, but anyway, so you can just do that, you turn it, um, you hold it over the top of it, and I know you all can't see this, but it was scanning, and it was adding them in, so now all I have to do is type, yeah, all I have to do is type in the name, and I'm good to go. So Debbie does make a good point, though. Debbie says, just remember, this does not take into account zero-point foods. That is exactly right, but my goodness. Usually, if I'm using this feature, it's not because I'm scanning zero-point foods. And Phyllis says it's magical. Okay, this is the one that me, Debbie, and Julie, and some other people were kind of perturbed about. So if you go to the plus sign again, Hello. And do, can you see that? Create meal. If you go to create meal and touch that, you can add a meal. So 
let's say for example so the first thing says add a meal name so I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call this meal yogurt breakfast okay because if I if I eat yogurt in the morning I eat it the same way it might not have the exact same ingredients in it but I eat the same way every time if I eat yogurt for breakfast so I'm gonna call this meal yogurt breakfast and then I'm gonna add a meal item and it's gonna bring up some of my frequently eaten things so can y'all see that it brings up some of your frequently eaten things so to that meal I always have let's see I always have coffee so I'm gonna pull up black coffee there and I'm gonna add that one I don't need to add any ingredients and it is zero but I'm gonna add that as an ingredient even though it's making a meal it's gonna call it an ingredient then I'm gonna add Dannon light and fit yogurt oops hold on I spelled it wrong I spelled it Canon Dannon light and fit yogurt and I eat the kind I eat I always eat the ones that are two points so it doesn't matter if it's vanilla or not they're always gonna be two points yeah and Debbie just made a good point she always puts her initials before the title so that when she types in DC all of her created foods up here okay so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna put in front of the yogurt I'm gonna put I Y H A E even though that's not my name if you have an egg yogurt breakfast so that I can top that in okay so now we've got black coffee Dan and light and fit yogurt and it doesn't matter what flavor it is I know all the ones I eat are all two points then I'm gonna add another ingredient and that is gonna be some kind of fruit so I'm just gonna put blueberries it doesn't I just know that blueberries is a zero zero point fruit so it always is gonna have a zero point fruit and it literally doesn't matter if it's blueberries strawberries a banana whatever it's gonna be some kind of a zero point fruit and I'm gonna add that ingredient um, and then I'm also gonna add some granola let me find that and I'm going to do one tablespoon I'm gonna do one tablespoon of yogurt and so now I have I Y H A E if you have an egg or like Debbie puts DC in front of hers because those are her initials that way you can find your food faster and you're gonna click if you want to do notes you can type some notes down here you can do some um, optional things but then you're gonna click create and now I have this breakfast saved so now I've got a three point if you have an egg yogurt breakfast is black coffee some kind of Dan and light and fit and um, yogurt that is two points some kind of zero point fruit and a tablespoon of, um, of you know of granola a granola that's gonna be one tablespoon if you need to add something else to it on the fly you can if you want to favorite it you just touch that little touch that little flag it's like a little flag tag I guess you're gonna to touch that and that will favorite it and then you can tell it that you're done so here's what's gonna happen the next time that I need to track that I can go to breakfast or I can go to search food and I can top in I Y Let's see if you have an egg if, if I could spell correctly if you have an egg oops my goodness I cannot type if you have an egg that is not coming up yet um oh whoops whoops, whoops. that's for dinner hold on let's see track breakfast so we're gonna tell it we want um, yogurt. Breakfast. Hmm, that did not come up where I wanted it to. So instead we're gonna have to go to, I think we're gonna have to go to my food. Yep, yeah. okay, so we're gonna have to go to the three horizontal lines go to my food and then there's foods recipes and meals so foods that you've saved like if you scan them 
or whatever would be there. Recipes that you've created would be here. And this might be a little bit different because it's my tablet instead of my phone. But recipes will be there. And like if you're like when I'm on my phone, the recipes come up with two even cooler looking um, sections that have the recipes that I've created or recipes that I've saved. But then you can go to meals. And if you go to meals, it should be, of course I have a lot of meals saved. I have a lot of meals saved. So let me find it. Right there it is. So if you have, so I, and I only, don't put I-Y-H-A-E in front of yours, just because that's, you know, Debbie puts D-C, you know, or you can put something else in front of it, or you can just name it if you want to. But so here now is that yogurt breakfast, and I can just hit track, or I can delete an item from it, or like if I had two tablespoons of granola this time, I can go to add and I can add some more granola. Does that make sense? You can change what time of day you had it. You can change it to breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, but see how much easier that is? It's so stinking easy. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Julie, for finding that again. Um, so excited that saving a meal is back. Um, and I do actually like that little plus sign because that is a super stinking easy way. If they'll leave it alone, it's a super stinking easy way to get to create a recipe, create a food. I'm so happy that the scanner is back for when you create a new food um, and for creating a meal. And you should be able to pull up all of your meals. So if you don't see that feature or if you're having trouble finding meals that you've previously saved, just go ahead and force update your app. Make sure that it's all updated. And again, the, my phone, the phone version of my app is a little bit prettier. It's got, you know, some, some newer little... Um, boxes and you know just some prettier things but this is gonna work great on the iPad so I went ahead and you know did that as well okay so thank you again Julie thank you Julie and Debbie for having that that little debate with Weight Watchers about where all that stuff went and for accidentally finding it again yay that is awesome y'all help us out so much and Debbie says just know the little plus sign is on the right side on an Android so Debbie is saying that instead of how mine is on the left side, I think what she's saying is that hers is on the right side. So instead of on the left side of the screen, it's on the right side of the screen for an Android. But okay, so that is it for tonight. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you all learned something and I hope that you all are not mad at the Weight Watchers um, app developers anymore or maybe a little less irritated at them than you were last week. But you, um, and yes, iPhone is on the left, Sarah. But yes, it is. Um, but anyway, so y'all have a great week. If you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you will let that next video roll over and that you will click that little button and subscribe. But y'all have a great week, and I want to hear all about your playing. And if y'all find anything else, if you find something else new or something else that was gone away and has been added back, let us know because we would love to share that with everybody. So y'all have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Good night.